money, Jordan Bell fur. Stacking penny stocks while I'm flipping these birds. Sipping on Ciroc, trip them up with the words. I done popped the molly and I think it's be my third. What is going on, DJ Nation? Kenny Kim here bringing you another Fantasy Golf Degenerates podcast this week for the Open Championship, final major of the year. As usual, I am here with everybody's favorite South African, Byron Lineke. Byron, what is up, my friend? Still having to think about exactly who is everyone's favorite South African, Kenny, there, huh? But I'm just You know, when you do like 200 episodes to one person, it's sort of, it's hard to adjust even like, you know, 15 episodes in. I know. We've done good though. You you only I think got it once and then I was that. But we are cooking. Um Scottish man. Quite a fun finish yeah. there and controversial. We can chat about that, but all's good. All right. So as usual, our show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code Mayo. Get yourself a deposit match, deposit bonus up to two hundred and fifty dollars. Pretty good week to myself. Uh on the underdog streets. I did post an underdog play for the final round. It hit pretty easily. Uh, Wyndham Clark was my favorite play of Sunday after seeing what happened. Uh, so we did get that nice little win, and that win basically secured a winning week for me. So I will take that. Uh, now, for the Scottish itself, you know, my my arch nemesis, Bobby Mack, ends up winning. But, I mean, what, what can I say? I mean, the guy that stalls. I mean, shoot, that going, you know, eagle, birdie, whatever, the finish is pretty sick, even with, you know, the nice little – dropped to the ad. I, I wasn't around. I didn't see it, but I mean, you know, if it was legal and it was in the rules, I mean, eh, like it's the, you can't really blame him for anything like that. It's just, you know, maybe the rule needs to be changed uh, is what it seems like to me um, when it comes down to it. But that put on 18 was sick. I mean, I, there, there's not really in front of your home country, your home crowd, the one championship that you want more than any other championship. And you can pull out something like that I mean, I got to give him props. I I can dislike him as much as I want, uh, but you, you got to give the man props uh, for what he did. We had a lot of big big names sort of fall off the board. Uh, I did not get to see much of it on Sunday. I watched all of it on, on Saturday, uh, but I played a little bit of golf myself this afternoon, uh, so I missed the majority uh, of the uh, ter- of the action except for uh, his final putt. Uh, now. You know, from what I saw, you know, Morikawa early in the morning, Oberg was up there. They both sort of fell off. Oberg lost about four strokes to the green uh, on Sunday, which isn't great. Uh, now, is that a problem? Who knows? Because he gained like nine strokes to the green when he won at the RSM in the final round. Uh, so, you know, who knows? Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, a lot of a lot of people, you know, a lot of like uh, names that you maybe not would have expected sort of creeping up the leaderboard. Um at the end of the day, I mean, you look at and you got Aaron Rye again, another top five finish. I think he gets into the Open Championship, yes. correct? So he is in. Uh, I wonder what his price will be. I'm probably going to guess mid sevens. I don't think we're going to get him for super cheap because they already have a bunch of super cheap guys when you come in here. But Romain Langascu up there with a six under. Adam Scott played well. Uh, Roy, you know, he played all right when it came down to it. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, there wasn't really that much movement uh, from the leaders. Uh, you know, we had a guy named Arman Zell shoot, what, 61. Uh, Wyndham Clark, who I definitely saw that coming um, as the week went on with him because you saw gradually, round by round, his approach game has gotten better. His off the tee always elite. Uh, and then, you know, Wednesday, it looked like it could have all went to, or not Wednesday, Saturday, it looked like it all could have come together for him, but he couldn't putt. Uh, he was one of the worst putters in the field. So, you know, usually he's a pretty good putter. Uh, so I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to go hard on Wyndham with the underdog. Um, yeah, I think he ended up having eight or nine birdies. I think four and a half was the number. Uh, I had him on a lottery ticket play with Xander to get into. Uh, so uh, Wyndham finished top 20. Xander finished top five. Xander couldn't do it. He, was, he didn't get his juices going until the end of the round, um, finishing three under with a top 15. Um, but I think Clark finished eighth or something like that. So uh, kudos to him. Um, what'd you think of the event? How, how'd you like? It? Yeah, from a betting standpoint, Clark top five didn't cash. Xander top ten didn't cash. All by like one shot. So tough scenes on that side. But Colin top twenties and a mortal lock in these kind of situations, um, in calm conditions. And then him and Ludwig, man, I don't know. Ludwig has come bursting onto the scene, Kenny, and. 
I always had a feeling about him being like a jumpy, jittery kind of a guy. And his short game, 59th in the Scottish Open field, not the best. And it showed its head big time. He, he double chipped on the same hole Robert made an eagle. And I've, I've got a new nickname for him. Robert Luck Sackentire is what we're going to be calling, or I'll be calling him from now on, because that drop was egregious from the ruling perspective. I agree, nothing wrong with him. But to make an eagle from where he was, was, you know, unreal. But Ludwig scolded like duff to chip on that hole as well. Every chip he had that was nearby the green, he kind of just absolutely left himself with like a 10-footer every single time. He was not knocking him stone dead ever. That's his biggest bugaboo. So when he can hit the greens in, in tons of regulation, then he's golden. But when he's chipping, man, he chipped himself out of the US Open as well. I think on 14, right? See, him and Tony did the same thing where they just chipped and chipped and chipped. And he's he tends to do that, man. And under pressure, tough scenes. Same with Colin. I, I think well. when it comes to the final round, it worries him a little bit more because he was top five in strokes get around the green in the third round. Oh, yeah, but that can be so a, from a like, fringe or something like that, you know? Course, I don't think he's a very good so around so can the double hit, you know, from that chip could cause him to lose half a stroke uh, when it comes down to it. Uh, so, I mean, you know, strokes gain is not the end all be all. It's not the most accurate outside of strokes gain off the tee, uh, which, you know, is a baseline that everyone starts with. And that is the only truly accurate strokes gain metric there is uh, because everyone's hitting it from the same exact spot every single time. Um, so really, Watching you know, what? But like watching him, you can watching tell him, he's yeah. I not believe the that. best around the green. I, be, I, I believe that. And it's not his, it, it's his forte, but he was still inside the top 40 for the week. Um, it wasn't like horrid, horrid. Um, and that includes guys who, you know, maybe shot well around the greens in the first couple of rounds uh, and then missed the cut, which is definitely a possibility if they're missing a lot of greens. Uh, more than likely, they were going to make this cut. But, uh, you know, or, you know, when it comes down to we got this final – Major coming in. I think this is a good little warm up. I, the thing is, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, you want a guy who played this week to, you know, if you're going to bet, basically, uh, a lot of it comes from playing the week before. I think something like uh, there is some type of trend. I'll have to look at it. It'll probably be in my write up uh, for Gup's Corner starting tomorrow, but I'll look at it a little bit more. But, the, you know, a lot, of, a lot of winners recently have played the week before uh, when it comes down to it. And the thing is, I, when, it, when you get to the Open Championship, I don't think you can really. I don't know. It depends nowadays because it's been a little bit wild. I mean, five of the last 10 years, you know, the winning score has been 15 under or above. And I think the previous like 5 billion years before that, it's happened like four times. So, you know, you're just getting unlucky with the weather bias. Also, uh, the new equipment seems to be more of a detriment for open road courses than any other type of major there is uh, because it's so much harder to make these courses play more difficult at length there's just not enough room um and so like you see like you know st andrews uh you know uh, if you want st andrews to be a type of course that you see for the next 50 100 years they're gonna have to roll the equipment back um or it's going to become blow the wind 100 <laughs> um and so you know that's something that we could see this week we'll see i mean i when i when i checked the weather earlier um we were looking at you know about three four days ago we we're looking at 30 35 mile per hour gust possible in a couple of days now i'm seeing 10 to 15 the whole week uh so it's just been a little bit of bad luck for the open championship where it's been like good weather for the majority of the last decade uh, or so so we shall see i mean it's supposed to be cold uh you know and that is going to be you know the biggest defense uh of the course if it's nice and yeah you know, hey if it's nice and easy and soft and not windy, I mean, you're going to see, um, you know, more than two people over six under par, uh, like in 2016, uh, you know, because Stetson was 20 under, Phil was 17, third place is minus six. Um, I don't think, uh, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes uh, with this weather, because of course that is going to be the most important thing. Anything else catch your eye? What about Manicero? Uh, a little good run by him. For a guy who's just been sort of out of it for about a decade with so much hype and coming in with, you know, now he's, I think it's three top 10s in a row, three top 15s um, in a row. I mean, it's pretty, pretty solid stuff by him. Yeah, no, he's, he's starting to, you know, I think Adam Scott, I saw 1,600 and something days since his last win. Manicero, similar situation, as young as he is, I guess, still, you know, he came onto the scene early as a teenage prodigy and kind of, exploded and then kind of burnt himself out and, and now is showing back up again, which is exciting. 
But you mentioned some trends, Kenny, and guys playing the week before, all that stuff. Since 2012, the winner of the Open Championship had a first or second place in a prior major. Since 2012. Darren Clark in 2011 finished third. So that's the first outlier. Louis, 73rd in 2010, was the one total outlier. Since 2010, 79% of golfers have finished second or first that have won the Open Championship. So like... Oh, at a out of major? In a previous major, yes. So many major, major not just the open, right? Any major. Um, I think I was taking a peek and just trying to figure out open championship trends as well, prior open championships, and it was more like a top twenty number in open championships than than anything like super finite. So open championship track record was not that important. Major pedigree essential this week. I will not be betting anyone unless they have a top two in a major. It's just I'm just going to be sticking with that rule. And then we can chat about the wind and see what goes on. But once the weather kind of rolls itself out, I'm going to like kind of play the cards we get wind blown to and see, you know, if there's a nice weather edge that we can kind of find. Because Yeah, of course. The weather is definitely going to be the most important yeah. thing. But, you know, kudos to Robert McIntyre, probably, um, well, probably the second best weekend out of anyone uh, behind maybe Mr. Donald Trump uh, for, you uh, I mean, I politics aside, I mean, him not getting killed and then that picture, and he's just I, I mean, surreal. Yeah, I don't really know what to say about it. What a day for the former president because he just basically locked up uh, the election. I don't see how, you know, how if he makes it to the election, Jesus. That, that's true. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Pretty crazy stuff. That picture was amazing. Uh, and supposedly, he went out today and play golf i don't know if this is true uh this is a twitter little thing but supposedly uh, he played trump bed mr bedminster today uh and uh a guy who i guess caddy or something who was at the course watched him play the ninth hole and he had like some 20 foot double breaker uh he for birdie and trump made it and he's like that's the difference between the shooter and me i don't miss <laughs> i was like oh my god if that is true <laughs> Holy shit! Holy shit! Like, like, I, I mean, I don't really want to get into my politics for it. I mean, like, you know, I voted for him once. I didn't vote for him another time. So we're fifty-fifty when it comes Good. to Trump uh, right now, right? So, um, I don't. It's just incredible stuff. Uh, just, just that picture. Uh, and I didn't really want to talk about it that much, but I mean, it was just such a, just a surreal night last night. Uh, as an American, to see what happened. I mean, first off, the violence is horrible. It's something that we can't really happen. I mean, that's, you know, this type of stuff that happens when you assassinate, when, when assassination attempt for a president is like stuff that happens in like countries that aren't great. Yes. My country, you know, that's, yeah, it should have happened ages ago too. I, I, but I digress. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, it's so pre pretty wild and amazing week, uh, weekend, uh, you know, maybe Bobby Max, uh, win a little bit trumped this week, but good for him. Good for Bobby. I really still don't like him, and I'm probably going to fade him this week after hearing his press conference about how he's about to go on a bender again. Uh, because honestly, this is like his holy grail, right? I mean, like, yeah, you want to win the major, but like his whole life, he's like, I want, I need to win the Scottish Open. I need to win the Scottish Open. Like, do you come back from that, like, and be recharged to win the Open Championship when you finally reach your ultimate goal? Um, I feel a poor week for him next week. Actually, I'm just hoping for a poor week for us. So I have to see him on my goddamn TV again for, you know, all four days when it comes down to it. But you got to give him credit. Pretty incredible stuff by Mr. Bobby Mac. Anything you want to talk about before we move on? No, just from last week's show, the raccoon eyes, folks. I've been riding my bicycle like crazy. I'm going to be doing rag bra. I'll be riding from freaking the west coast of Iowa to the east coast, well, the west boundary to the east boundary, seven days, 500 miles. The settings on my camera were a bit weird. I, I don't have like a skin issue. I was getting raccoon eyes and all sorts of like nourishment suggestions in the chat there. I appreciate you guys. We good. You know, just a little bit of sunscreen, golden, all's fine. Just want you guys to know the raccoon eyes, they're okay. All right. That sounds good. Before we move on, let's uh, pay some bills. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. I personally like the Pick'em games. Pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. 
can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build a pick em entry. Can also make rivals picks, which pits two players against each other. Now, the reason I like the pick em games is because of these things called scorchers. There's these little chili peppers next to the golfer's names. And if you click on that, it adds to your multiplier. So you can win even more money. Sign up today with promo code MAYO and get your first deposit doubled up to $100, as well as an instant pick em special. Must be 18 or over and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1 800 522 4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. All right, so let's talk about our, uh, once again, we're doing our thing every week. We go to the comment section, pick your winner uh, with your DraftKing handle name. Uh, and if you pick the right, if you're the first person to pick the correct winner, you go against us in a three man. Last week, B England. 95. He went up against us in the three-man and crushed us. We will be in the Tournament of Champions uh, at the Sony Open for a bunch of prizes. This week's um, oh man, I just lost it. This week's winner is going, I think his name is Admiral Coward oh, <laughs> on YouTube. His YouTube name is Admiral Coward. His um, DraftKings handle KV underscore smooth with a V at the end. Not it's smooth, good. smooth. You will be joining us in the three man at the Open Championship. So good luck to you. Make sure you check your your uh, your DK notifications because I will be sending you uh, an invite by Tuesday to go up against uh, Byron and I. Make sure everybody listening go out there, go on our YouTube channel, pick your winner, leave your DK name. You might win some shit. All right. So normally we do our underdog fantasy segment right now, but we are recording this on Sunday. It is not out yet. Uh, but instead, let's talk about some things that might be different. I'll go ahead and start. I know, Barry, you have some trends uh, and stuff that you'd like to talk about. One thing I want to speak about just because uh, where we're going to underdog, underdog usually uses previous iterations of the event to make their numbers, correct? Uh, you look at this course, you know, it, they're going to come out Monday or, or Monday with, with, the, with the, you know, lowers and hires for pick them, right? Um, you know, weather can change. You're going to have to pay a lot of attention uh, to it. Like, if you want to get in early, it's because the numbers will change based on the weather throughout the week. You know, maybe you take a little bit of an aggressive stance when it comes to underdog. When it first comes out, you look at these numbers, you look at the weather, and you try and play that game. Um, a couple of other things that they're going to go based upon uh, the 2016 version of this tournament, you know, there's a pretty big amount, substantial amount of changes um, that could possibly make this course a little bit more difficult. First off, added length. Second, nine new tee boxes. These tee boxes can literally change how the course looks and plays uh, based upon how these golfers are used to it. I mean, some of these golfers have played this course twice um, in their career, Tiger, stuff like that, Phil, uh, well, not too many, but you know, when you come down to and you think about stuff like that, you know, I would get along with like one early, right? Just so you could beat the numbers and then play play one on, on Wednesday and pick one on Wednesday and do another one. And make sure you pay attention to these weather waves. Who's playing when, where, because it's going to be super important. There's going to be numbers, especially early on, they're going to be off. Um, because I think I think this course is going to play a touch harder than it has before. So if you see bogeys like around two, one and a half, you know, something like that, you know, you might want to uh, go a little bit higher on that. But again, weather dependent, you're taking your risk to going early. Now, Byron, I know um, once again, you know, uh, this is our underdog segment. So go ahead and use promo code mail. Get yourself a deposit match uh, bonus up to $250. Now, what trends are you seeing uh, this week that might be able to help some people out when it comes to underdog betting, DFS, all that good stuff? Yeah, I don't have too many though, Kenny, because it's a new course. Like you said, we don't have that that track record, what we're looking for. I think you just got to really focus. Use common sense. You know, if you see the wind picking up, bang, you know, all the higher stuff. If you don't, lower. You know, like it's a pretty simple situation. Like Kenny just said there, we don't have any track record yet, and it's a brand new golf course. Essentially. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so I know you still had that one about the first and second place. Now, for me, for our betting segment, uh, definitely going to be a little bit shorter because, honestly, 
like, you should probably wait till Wednesday yes. to put your bets in. Uh, I know we we try and get our betting segment out. We try and do our underdog segment every week, but th- this is just it's it's not very smart making anything now. Now I went ahead and had some futures, uh, you know. So I you know I saw Morikawa doing what he was doing earlier in the week. Uh, you know he's got new irons that he likes that are specifically designed for the sandy type soil uh, that he's going to see uh, on these fairways and stuff like that. Um, and you know last time he switched uh, irons and stuff like that. Before the Open Championship, he won. Uh, you know, that's not the reasoning why, but you know, the guy's playing good golf. Just top ten after top ten after top ten. Uh, you know, everything seems to be coming back for him except the wins. And at some point, that's going to happen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take him at twenty to one with eight places uh, this week. I think twenty to one's a pretty reasonable number. You might still be able to get sixteen out there, uh, but this is a future for me. So I have I have him at twenty to one. I would probably cap it at sixteen. Um, now or or do go on Bet365 and use the uh, the the three place each way and get the boosted number. Um, I think you might even be able to get better than 20 to 1 uh, for, or right around there with a boosted 3 to 1 each way. Uh, now, uh, my second one's going to be Kepka. Uh, like I said, I, I said this in the last major, every major. I'm going to bet Kepka at every major for the next five years. If you bet him and his odds are, I'm trying to win a thousand bucks and his average odds are 25 dollars, right? Uh, or 25 to 1, let's just say. That's not what it is this time. Let's just say its average odds for this five-year span is 25 to 1. Um, He hits once, you make your money back, right? Uh, The most prolific major winner of our time. Um, If he wins, so I started betting him at every major starting at the Masters this year. So even if he loses these four, uh, you got 16 more to go. And if he hits once, you make your money back. He hits twice, you double your money back. I think it's pretty really I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for Kepka to win two majors in the next five years. Right? Doesn't uh, sound insane to me. Right. Cool. So this is basically like a golfer investment for me. Right. I'm just gonna go ahead and bet him every single time. Uh at every single major. Um, and you're gonna get decent odds because he plays and lives and he plays like shit and lives. So you're you're gonna get decent odds. I got thirty to one. It might even be worse than 30. It might be I've seen 40. Out there. You've seen this 40s? 40. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got 30 to 1, eight places uh, for, for, for Brooks. I was a little worried that he'd have a good week this week. And then maybe, you know, you could see him at like 25 or something. So I went ahead and just took, because 30, I think, is a great number for Kepka, no matter what. It's not like he sucks at the Open Championship. This isn't what he started at, right? People forget he started on the, on the European tour. This is a you hit, you know. This is like him and Benny on. It was their trajectory to go through Europe, uh, and you could see with you know the slew of top tens that he's had at Open Championships in the past, um, you know. And he's going to be ready for the major. He's, it's all about the putting for him. If he can get out of the putter, he's going to win, uh, because mentally, I think he's stronger than ninety nine point nine percent of the field. Um, and if he can get a hot putter, uh, I, I like his chances. So thirty to one for him, and then I went Sanjay at sixty to one. I figured that number was going to be, you know, 40, 45, 50. Um, the guy's just playing really good uh, outside of majors. At some point, he has to, you know, do well in majors. He at least has a top 20 at this one, right? Uh, I think he finished 20th last year uh, at the Open Championship. But the way he's playing, give me a little Sung JM at 60 to 1. But those are the only bets that I have right now because I am going to wait until I see the weather. Yeah. Um, unless there's some, like, crazy number that i see when the odds shift on monday um like if i see like some guys that i like if i see like a 70 to 1 Wyndham clark or something like that then maybe i'll just go ahead and smash that right there but uh we but those are the only bets i have i would wait as late as possible you'll 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 see me um on the gups corner e9 show on wednesday and i'll have all my final bets i'll have all my final plays all that good stuff i know you'll see byron uh on his shows, the back nine bets on Tuesday, Rotoballer shows. You'll see him as the week goes on. This is I, I know it sucks because those are behind paywalls. It sucks. But this is the one week where we're going to be smart about it and we're not going to go fucking stupid and make our own tiring card now and then be fucked with, with, with the weather yes. when it comes Wednesday. I'm sorry. And we're yeah. not going to do it. Okay? Yeah. It's, we also trying to give you guys the right stuff. You know, this we are putting out content, but at the same time, we speak in knowledge here, you know, so I think 
There is one name that I have bet so far, Kenny. 220 to 1. Will Zalatoris. I mean, he's Brooks light. Very, very light. You know, like when it comes to majors. I understand his game hasn't quite been what we've we expected from Willie over the last little while, but he didn't you know, withdraw on this week at least. I don't yeah. think he didn't, make, he didn't make the cut, right? I don't know what he's I don't, doing. But all I know is in majors we gold it, you know. So at two hundred and twenty to one, my card I haven't even started my card. You know, that's free that's a free square, you know, in my opinion. So you you hardly kind of digging your bankroll there and Willie Z in majors is just amazing. Who the heck knows? Maybe he gets a good break, maybe he doesn't. I don't know there. I might be joining you on the Brooks side of things. I'm seeing a Wyndham Clark 80 to 1 game with five places each way. You can get a 20. Yeah, it's going to be hard not to bet Wyndham this week after what he did on Sunday. Uh, really, really impressive stuff. And I just saw it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could tell by, like, the daily progressions that he had through round one to round three. I mean, I fuck a big, big round for him uh, in round four. And I really wish Sander did something because that shit paid 90 to 1. It was a uh, Wyndham top 20 and a Xander top five. And, you know, Wyndham easily got in there. He was 46 heading into heading into Sunday. Yeah. And he, I think he finished eighth or ninth or some shit like that. So, so it was a pretty good, pretty good final round for, for Wyndham Clark. All right. In fact, Kenny, I just bet Wyndham Clark 80 to one with five yeah. places. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you just, you just put it in. Yeah. Um, I just picked it right now. We're in. So I've got two. Willie Z, 220 to 1. Wyndham Clark, 80 to 1? I mean, got, he's he's got a top two. You know, that's all you need for me to bet you. And he's got one. So 80 to 1. Yeah, I think I might have to get on that right now, yeah. too, because that number's going to drop. For Tomorrow, sure. it'll re recalibrate. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, it'll probably be like 50 or less. 50 or 50. Yeah. yeah. Depending which all right, so at. let's actually get to this week. Let's get to the Open Championship. What a great, great event to love this you get to go watch night golf i'm probably going to take off friday just so i can you know get up at three or four o'clock and just sit and veg and watch golf all day uh it should be a fun time so the best golfers in the world head to ayrshire scotland to play the open championship in the old course at world true golf club uh this is the third time in the last 20 years true has hosted the open championship todd hamilton beat out ernie ells in 2004 and stenson held off phil in 2016 the course held its teeth both times and the total of only 32 golfers shot under par in both years combined. I think in 2004, 17 golfers out of 156 shot under par. Um, in 2016, um, it was 50, I think. So, I, you know, it's this ain't a cakewalk. And it's not like it was like crazy insane weather both of those years either. Um, now, weather, of course, going to be the key factor after a bunch of lame open championships weather-wise. I thought we might see some carnage like I spoke about earlier. Uh, you know, I saw like 30 mile broad gusts and I was getting hype, hype. Now I'm seeing 10 to 15. Honestly, like you can't judge the weather here until like not even 12 hours before. <laughs> like six yeah. hours before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Gotta, like, it's going to be the same day. <laughs> yeah. like, like, like I'm planning on making my lineups at like 9 p.m. on on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I usually go to bed around 10, 30 or 11. Take me an hour or so. To make my line of tee off is what? Two o'clock, I think. Yeah. Two or three is lock. So that's how I'm going to go about making my line this week. Um, now, Royal Troon, 7,300 plus yard, par 71, four par threes, three par fives. Um, it is a traditional leagues course, meaning it is built along the seaside. The soil is sandy. It features seaside grasses, has numerous bunkers that are usually deep so the sea breeze doesn't blow the sand away, has literal onor trees, and the course roots out and back, meaning hole one starts at the clubhouse while the ninth hole is the farthest from the clubhouse, and they play in towards the clubhouse on the back nine. No other course in the open rotation or on the whole PGA Tour, for that matter, has two nines that are this that are, that are more diverse. The front nine of Road Street plays like around 3,500 yards, maybe a little bit more, uh, with two par fives, and the back nine plays 3,800-plus yards with only one par five. None of the five par fours on the front play longer than around 450 yards, and the par fours on the back range from 430 to 502. Uh, the length of these two nines are exacerbated by the wind. The front nine usually plays with the wind, making it play much shorter than what it already is. The back nine usually plays against the wind, making a long and difficult stretch that much more challenging. 
Uh, Gary Player once called the back nine of truth the most difficult in the world when the wind is blowing. Now, on that front nine, the two, the two par fives, they actually added quite a bit of length. I think one of them, they added like 40 yards. The other one, they added 30 yards. I think one of them, there, there's a par five that's going to be like 625 yards here on this course. They've had a lot of rain here. I don't expect it to roll out like fiery conditions like we've seen in some opens of decades past. We're just not getting that luck now where we see those type of conditions. Um, lots of rain. Um, so, of course, it's definitely going to play a little bit longer, especially the par fives. Definitely going to play a little bit more difficult. But just to remember, if there is wind on that front nine, it's going to be in the golfer's back. So you're going to have to take advantage of those holes. Uh, par fives, even though they are a little bit longer, they are still they are still birdieable and possibly eagleable uh, based upon how much wind is going behind you. Um, now, off the tee, golfers see narrow fairways that are very difficult to hit. In 2004, uh, less than 50% of all tee shots found the fairway. 2016 had similar numbers. Um, if golfers miss the fairway, they're going to have to deal with thick, rough, and deep penal you know, bunkers. Um, the rough wasn't too bad in 2004 because they had a relatively dry year. Uh, but this year, you know, they've had a lot, a lot of rain. Uh, this could lead to thicker rough than both 2004 and 2016, which was thicker than 2004. But we might be thicker and higher than 2016 um, for this year. Um, so I think, you know, when it comes to these fairways, there is like a three yard grace period before you get to like heavier stuff. Uh, you know, there is a little bit of a first cut uh, when it comes to these fairways. And, and, and if you just miss, it shouldn't be that difficult. And it also depends on the spectators, right? Uh, you know, these guys have a lot of spectators. There's going to be a shit ton of fucking people out there. Um, you're missing the right place where everyone's been stamping down, standing and shit. You know, that that's going to that's gonna make it a lot yeah, easier as me. well. Now, here's the problem. If you miss wild, like over the, 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 the spectators' heads, you could be fucked. Because what you're going to see at that point are gorse bushes. Um, if you get it into these gorse bushes that are about waist high, you're going to lose a stroke. It's just plain and simple. You've got to chip out sideways and hope you make it to the fairway, basically, when it comes down to it. Also, on the bunkers, these ferial bunkers are no fucking joke. Like, that's why you got to like these um, link style courses. And I really hope they come into play because you can't see some of these bunkers from the tee, right? You better have a good caddy this week, right? Who, who marks everything off because you're not going to see these bunkers because of the way, you know, some of these holes go. You can't see the top of these bunkers because the bunkers, of course, you know, fall down into the ground. It just looks flat. Um, so you're not going to be able to see them. You get into one of these bunkers, they're super deep, like link style crazy deepness, where if you're anywhere in the front half of the book, you're not going to get it over the front. You're going to have to pitch out sideways. Um, now, here's the thing. If you're along, there's holes where you can hit it over the bunkers, right? There's holes that you can hit it over the bunkers. And we're at another course where it's less than 50% driving accuracy. Even the accurate motherfuckers are going to miss these fairways. You know what usually happens in these type of situations? Bomb and gouge. Yikes. Bomb and gouge. Bomb and gouge. Especially because of the weather conditions, you're not going to see as much roll. I think that's what we're going to see this week. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not going to push out slow, shorter hitters. Um, especially ones with good long iron play and good around the green play. But guys who can hit it long and guys who can hit well, with, uh, who have good rough proximity, proximity out of the rough, um, I think those are a couple of things that you could definitely take a look at uh, this weekend. When it comes to like, like lower-priced golfers, I think, you know, getting them, get, picking ones that, are, that can – pound the ball a little bit. I think it would be a good way to go when it comes to like 7K and below because there's a lot of golfers down there and there's a lot of golfers we're not familiar with uh, when it comes down to that. And I think length is going to help. You're going to see a lot of bomb and gouge. And I think, you know, I think this puts Bryson um, into play uh, this week uh, because you got to think about it when you, when, when you hit it into that rough, he's going to have those longer, you know, shafts. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we got a long shaft with a pitching wedge. It's a six iron shaft, and he can really strike the ball straight through that longer grass. 
could see it, man. We could see back to back. Uh, we'll see how that goes. All right. So I just lost my whole. Okay. So now, uh, on approach shots, golfers are going to see very small greens, tiny, 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 that are very tough to hit. In 2004, only around 57% of the greens were hit. It's similar numbers in 2016. Um, and it was actually a little bit even more difficult in 2016 with the course changes uh, that occurred. Uh, there are deep bunkers surrounding almost every green, and the greens that um, will have shaved edges leading to golf balls that don't hit the meat of the green to collection areas or bunkers off the green. Uh, the greens are a bent grass plow blend, not fescue, bent grass plow bat blend. Uh, there have been a few changes to the course since 2004. Uh, the biggest change that they did was, uh, you know, they changed all the soil underneath the greens in 2013. Um, you know, Truman was by far the softest conditions of any course on the road until they changed this. Uh, it definitely made uh, a little bit more of a difference. And now that everything's grown in, you know, We'll see how much this wet, the wet season they had affects it. But I'm really, really want to see how these greens uh, can hold balls because, I mean, they, they changed everything uh, in 2013. So just so, you know, you get that nice little hop when you land on it. The greens are a lot firmer and it's 100% sand underneath, which causes a lot of bounce. But, again, if it's wet, you're not going to see it. So, we'll, again, we'll have to pay attention for when it comes to uh, the weather. Um, now, uh, so they wanted to make the course firmer. So now what this does is this sand, it causes less organic matter to grow on top of the green, making them, forcing them to be firmer and faster. That's what the sand does when you put it underneath the grass because it's not going to make the grass grow. You're not going to have as much organic matter because there's not that much to pull from, right? It's not like soil, like it, it's sand. Uh, and so that's why it leads to firmer and faster conditions because nothing's really just, you're just getting a little small amount of growth on top of that soil instead of the normal amount of baked grass probably you'd get if it was some other, if it was a blend, if it was like sand and something else. Um, now, according to Richard Weatherspoon, I'm sorry, according to Richard Windows who guided this change for World Truon, uh, the greens and fairways are 25% more firm than they were in the past. They also added about 200 yards of length, like I talked about, uh, and nine new tee boxes. From what it looks like, the course may play harder than 2016. Um, if it's calm, though, I don't think these are going to make too much of a difference. If it's windy, it could make a couple, maybe a stroke, or maybe a stroke difference on, on scoring average. And you got to remember that the cut line of 2016 was plus four. Yeah. This course is not like yeah. a cakewalk, even though fucking Stetson went 20 under ham, right? Um, now, granted, even in the eight years since since the last time, technology has changed a bunch, right? So, so the technology change and the difference in the courses maybe could just even out. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to listen to uh, press conferences, all that good stuff. What are you looking for in golfers this week? Danny, before I get to that, course previews in general, if, if you know what the course brings you and whatnot, can be a little boring or whatnot. I'm ramped the hell up after that dude you have got me so juiced for this tournament like just your <laughs> like you're about to set yourself on fire my my emotions are ready to rock and roll i'm ready for this tournament dude it's the last major let's freaking go i'm i'm so rocked up kenny when it comes to majors the easiest way to compare all the live guys the the pga tour guys is to use major tournament strokes gain i've said this for every major we've done this year i'm, I'm my modeling is based off of major strokes gain I will not be using PGA Tour stuff. Maybe if there's some tiebreakers I need here and there, I'll look at some recent form and whatnot. But majors, 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 majors for me. If you can do it, you can do it. I'm looking for dri good drivers in majors. Usually what you have in good drivers in majors are tough, uh, narrow fairways with thick rough. Who hits it the furthest and who gains the most strokes? The guys that drive it the best, right? So that's typically what I'll be looking on there. And then in majors, all the long irons, they come in majors all the time too. So... You can just use strokes gain approach in majors for the majority of the time because you are basically getting those built-in long proximities into major strokes gain approach numbers. So um, I'm seeing Kenny looking at me. I can see you, my brother, um, but you are a touch, touch blurry there, but it's all good. Um, just major track records, no, no, top fives, I had to, all that stuff. I had to adjust my AirPods. Yeah. Okay. Uh, par five scoring, you're going to need it. Um, 
sorry, I lost you there. My AirPods gave out. Oh, good. Uh, but, uh, you know, a approach like you were talking about proximity from 175 plus. I, I'm, I'm seeing probably six to seven shots from 175 out um, per round uh, here. So you're going to have to pay attention to that. And I, I don't know, man. I, I'm going to give the edge to longer hitters as well this week, especially if the teams are wet. Um, and especially if, um, you know, with this technology and, and, and avoiding those bunkers, the guys who can fly at 320, right, are going to have an edge. Yeah. You would much rather be in the rough than be in a fairway bunker. And if you can eliminate those fairway bunkers from your whole shot perspective off the tee, that's going to be a humongous, humongous advantage when it comes down to it. Preach. Now, we'll see where they put these tee boxes, though. They could make the course play a little bit longer. I don't know. We'll see and have those, uh, have those, you know, fairway bunkers and landing spots for longer hitters. But you don't normally see that. It's usually right there where the mid hitters are, right? Uh, right, right around three hundred yards is where you're going to see it. Right around three hundred. If you can fly three hundred, especially on the front, because that's where you're going to have to fucking score. When I did this course preview in 2016, I actually had a segment called the tail of two nines. And I had different stats for each nine holes because they're so fucking different. Like you have to score on that front nine. Half you have to, because the wind's at your back. You know, it's already shorter than the back. You know, the back nine is like 3,800 yards with only one par five. Right. And the wind in your face, it could play like over 4,000 yards with the wind. In the back, you're gonna have to hold on to fucking dear life on the back nine. On the front nine, that'd be awesome to watch on the way in on Sunday, man. But it's just the 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 differences are crazy. Like you never see this on, and you only see this on wind courses, only right. And, and on that front nine with the wind in the back, even though you know they extended these par fours, you got to take advantage of. There's also short. There's also short par four on that front. I mean, 3,500 yards with only with two par fives, and I think one of them 600 yards. I, I, I it's short, uh, like from like the the proximities that I looked for on the uh, on the front was like 125, like 100 to 150. So literally, I had different stats for different nines, like birdie birdie or better percentage on the front, bogey avoidance on the back, right? You know, I, and basically, like that's what you're looking for. Underdog props, Kenny. For nine for nine holes. Go check yeah. if you can find nine hole scores. Front nine unders, back nine overs. You know, if the if the numbers make sense. Oh, underdog. You are hundred percent great because they do do that. Well they'll do like front nine thirty five, you know, yeah. back nine thirty six. If they don't pay attention, that front nine is where you score. You might want to beat that down when it comes to underdog. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Because these nines are so, so, so different. Oh, 42 minutes. Right. Beautiful. So anything else before we get to these tiers? Let's go, bro. Let's talk some more. All right. So we got, uh, what, Oberg all the way up to uh, Mr. Scotty Scheffler. Um, let's talk about Scotty first. He hasn't had the best track record at Open Championships, right? Hasn't played in a while, at least a month. Has the newborn. Is $1,000 more than second up. Highest price guy. Is it possible we see the lowest owned Scotty Scheffler in the last six months? Yes. Like under 30%. Yes, for sure. Like very well I under, think, like closer to 20%. Probably 20 right? is probably what I'm probably imagining. Maybe even mid 15s. Like, like here's the thing Scotty's long and straight. His irons are good. He's around the green good. He hasn't really played. The, why Scotty's? I know Scotty. Last time he went out and said he's not the biggest fan because he doesn't know how bad his miss is going to be. Because the way Scotty lines up his tee shots is, he knows where he can miss it because he's seen it. It's all similar type stuff. He knows if he, he if he can't miss right, he has to miss left. Now the problem with Link's style uh, courses is you can just roll up into some crazy long bush and just be bad lie and or you can get a great lie if you if you miss it and you hit it into where people were standing i mean it's gonna be tight like there i don't think he knows 
what would be a better place to miss. Um, I think it becomes more difficult for him at these open championships um, off the tee. Now, he's so good and accurate that maybe that won't affect him. What are you doing with Scotty this week? At 20%, possibly only, it seems tempting. Yes. I think the ownership is what will determine if I play Scotty or not this week. Yeah. Is because of... We've laid out the reasons, you know, like his best finish in a major at an open championship is eighth. And the other two haven't even been top 20s. And this guy's rattling off top 20s in majors like it's his job. So 12-8 with the 5K range is still affordable, you know, especially with the fives. So if if we start seeing Scotty round 15 to 20%, man, I'm in. If he's pushing 25-30 for some weird reason, maybe we're very delusional. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm happy to leave him alone. You know, like my my opinion on him will change based off of that. But I'm not betting him top five, top ten. I usually always bet him for that. Not at this event. I don't have a good feel about him, Kenny, at the Open Championship. So he'll be a leverage opportunity if it presents itself. I like that. What do you think Bryce's ownership is going to be? Double what Scotty's might be, you know. I think it's going to be double. But I don't know. Maybe. I mean, when you're getting a $1,300 difference for... Yeah. For a person that some people are saying is even better than Scotty, why wouldn't you? You know, like he's a one A one B option. He has a top ten at the, at an open championship. It's not like he yeah. can't do it. Um, yeah, it's going to be tough. I think I want to play one of those guys, um, and it's probably going to be ownership based. And if I see, and I think Bryson is going to be more popular, and I think Scotty's the way to go. But I'm not sure who I'm playing up there yet. The one guy I know I am playing in this nine K range. Is Roy McIlroy now? Eleven. I did say I, I don't. I, I I don't know if he can win it, but I really want to see how he does when he when it comes down to it because I think he has the best chance to be in contention of all these ten K guys just because of his major track record. His track record at the Open Championship. You saw he hadn't played in three weeks. It was like the worst moment of his life. Comes in top tens at the Scottish or top fifteens uh, at the Scottish. Uh, now. I think if it gets down to it and, and, and he's in the lead going into the back nine, I expect the worst. But I think that he has the best chance of all of these guys to be in contention going into the back nine on Sunday with Scotty just a smidgen behind. Uh, maybe Scotty and him say, actually. But then you're saving, what, $1,300, uh, $1,400 um, in price, which is fucking huge. Um, even with the 5K range. Uh, I think Rory and Sheffield probably have the same in contention, you know, in my mind. They have, they're at the same level, but at $1,400, it, 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 that savings is a lot. So I'm definitely going to play Rory. Um, we'll see if I play um, Scotty. Odds are it's looking like it's yes. Um, now, what do you do with Xander? He hasn't really been great here, but he's super consistent. He probably has the highest floor in this 10K range. Him and Scott, I think, have the highest floor. Uh, because, I mean, even though Xander hasn't really top 10 here, it's like, you know, 18th, 15th, 13th. Um, that's just what he does. Again, he probably had his D game this past week, and he still finished top 15, right? I think he has the highest floor. I don't know if I want to play for the floor. Um, He's also and, been rolling out his D and C game since the PGA Championship, Kenny. And still... And doing okay. Out. He's been showing us the floor, shining up that floor all the time. Yes. The ceiling is, it's we're not touching it right now, you know, since the PGA. And that's my biggest concern with him yeah. is that. And going back to a venue that he hasn't finished inside the top 15 since 2018. He had a second at the Open Championship. Since then, the best finish the top 15. Man. It's 2022. So... I'm very concerned. I have him at 40 to 1 for all four majors top 10. I'm going to hedge out. If I can find a, a weird market where I can say, give me the outside the 11th at the Open Championship, especially after he won the PGA, I'm shitting myself because if he finished second at the PGA, I'm not hedging out. I think he's still hungry. I think he's still got his game firing like peak performance. See, the PGA for me has kind of got him off kilter. I think, I think that that makes it better for him. If the monkey's off his back, he can go out and play freely. Uh, we haven't really seen it, uh, but we'll we'll see. I, the guy I'm playing in cash, I thought about Xander for cash, um, but I'm going to go ahead and save the money. I'm going to go ahead with my first cash game cornerstone. It's going to be over. 
uh, at ten thousand one hundred dollars. Again, a guy with a very very high floor. I don't care that he's never played the Open Championship before. He never, you know, uh, he never played the Masters before, and he finished top five. He was in the lead for 60, 70 holes, 60, 65 holes at the Scottish Open. Um, I think his floor, I don't think he's he's not a miscut candidate. I think, you know, if anything, his floor is high and his ceiling is high. And I'm going to go ahead and rock him. Um, again, iron game, tee to green, off the tee, everything he will probably longer irons. Uh, again, a bogey of wins, even top five in bogey of wins. Um, you know, in this field in the last 24 rounds. Give me Obert uh, as my first cash game cornerstone. Who else peaks your eye in the 10 damage? Yeah, I think John Rahm is intriguing, Kenny. If his ownership comes in low, he has to feel like he has to do something in a major, man. Yeah. He's done diddly shit all year. He, it's time. And I feel like the Open Yeah. Uh, I maybe. I mean, there's so many better options around him. Who are playing better golf, you know, and even at his 10 4 price tag, Xander's more appealing, Ludwig's more appealing, Collins more appealing, Rory's more appealing, you know, two guys either side of him. Maybe the nines is a bit of an argument to be had there, but I'm in on John Rahm as an alt, like a, you know, contrarian play there for sure. And yes, Ludwig, Kenny, when you're looking for someone who's got length, he's got it. When you're looking for someone who's got accuracy, he's also got that. So he might be nuking it into the fairway still, too, you know, so. But we saw the driver go a little errant under pressure today, which he, it's interesting to see that he's actually finally showing up with a bit of nerves, which, you know, we haven't really seen from him much lately. But, um, yeah, I think my guy in the bottom there is Ram at 10-4 as a, like a weirdo play. All right, 9K range, uh, my second cascade cornerstone. It's going to be between two people. Um, I haven't made a final decision yet. It's going to be either Fleetwood or Hatton. Um, right now I have Hatton in uh, my lineup now, but... Um, we'll see. That's going to be weather. You know, I'll see which way because they're both the same for me. Um, I think um, Patton might have a little bit more upside, but you would think about that because Fleetwood top 10 here all the time. So I don't even know if that's true. Uh, but again, you know, Hatton coming off a win a couple of weeks ago uh, at Nashville, not bad this past week at uh, Valderrama, which played pretty tough. Um, and then we got um, Fleetwood, of course, who, you know, was – had that really, really strong Saturday or Friday, got back up uh, in contention, sort of faded again on Sunday. Like we did. Yeah. yeah, he hit me up. I had more than two bogeys for him for my underdog on Sunday, and he came through. Uh, I think he had three. So um, I, I think I want to play one of those two as my second gas game cornerstone. I'll play the other one um, in GPPs, and I'll play Kepka um, down here. It's possible Kepka's in my cash lineup as well. Um, it's not out of the realm of possibility with that five thousand dollar range uh, to go. Um, so as of now, I actually have Kepka in my cash lineup, even though he's not a cash game cornerstone. Um, again, he top ten here a bunch back in the day when he when his game fell off. His game fell off here at the Open Championship as well. But you know, he knows how to play these courses. He's familiar with the weather, all that stuff, the grind, the mentality, um, all that. And he can poke it out there. Um, uh, with the best of them. Um, so I'm definitely going to play Cap. Who do you like in the night game? What I don't like is Turrell, Kenny. The fact that he hasn't had a top five in a major yet is, again, we're going to the same boat that Minwu and, and we had last time round. I'm but pretty sure Turrell had a top five here. I'm not, I'm seeing a six. 2016. Two. 2016 at this course. Okay. Okay, my data goes back to 2017. So what do you fucking do? Um, what eight years ago? Congrats, Terrell. You know, but on the same course. On the same course, sure that that is a benefit. But I think he's going to be ultra popular. So maybe you know, cash game is whatever. Um, I think from a guy that I'm really looking at here to be safe is is Tommy. I think you're always going to be looking at Tommy. Colin Morikawa's got more top fives since 2021 than anybody in majors but i don't trust him the champion golfer of the year of 2021 goes and misses the next two cuts in open championships like they should rescind that shit from him dude because that's disgusting you know you can't win the open championship and then finish sick miss cuts back to back time so he needs to figure his stuff out but um tommy will be in my mix here for sure and then i think do i what's your thoughts on victor man like 
this range is gross. I'll be playing Brooks with you as well. But Victor Hovland, if he's a an option at very low ownership, I'll be in again. But he was high owned this week. So I don't know. Uh, this 9K range isn't very appealing to me. Yeah, I don't know about Hovland. More Kawa, I think it's more of a bet uh, than a... Um, Top than, five than, and call it five. Someone, especially, I'd rather have like three guys above him in that 10K range to play in DFS. Uh, but at 20 to 1, I like his number better than like a 14 to 1 for 8 or 11 to 1 for Ober, which is what it's at now um, in a lot of places, you know. And 10 to 1 for Rory, you know, it's a, it's a big freaking difference. It's a lot of points. Yeah. Um, so from a gambling perspective, from a betting perspective, I do like uh, more Kawa, but I don't know if I'll be using him um, in DFS just because the guys in the 10K range are affordable based upon the 5K uh, range that we have. This week, what about Patrick Hanley, who had coming off three straight top fives, um, right? Isn't he you know, our two straight top fives um, coming in to here? He, you know, he's had an eighth, he's had a twelfth uh, at the Open Championship. Any, 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 any love for 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 Canley? No, this whole nine K range is gross, Kenny. I don't have a. I just got shit to say about these guys. I don't have anything good. Well, it looks like Rico Hui is in a playoff at the ISCO Championship right now. With? Uh, I don't know who he's up against, but I just got the notification. All right, so let's move to this uh, 8K range. I'm going with my third cash game cornerstone, my fourth cash play of the, of, of the round already. You can have four guys over $8,700 here this week. No problem. Uh, and, and make a line of the you like that I like a lot already. Uh, I'm going to see that, right? Uh, I'm, going, I'm going big tall, coming in with Three straight top tens. The form is finally there. He's had uh, top five at the Open Championship. He's had a couple of top tens at the Open Championship. He finished top twenty here at um, at this course in 2016. Of course, uh, you know his stats have been uh, his iron game exceptionally strong. He avoids bogeys. Top ten in bogey avoids in his last um, 24 rounds. Really been excellent uh, the last few months. Around the green, um, t- six in my model in the last 24 rounds. Uh, Tony's going to be my third cash game cornerstone. Um, I do like him a lot. Other guys um, in this range that I am going to play. Um, Tom Kim really impressed me this week, um, especially with his Sunday. I, he was my fade of the week, and I thought I was cold. I think he was 43rd heading into Sunday, but coming in and doing what he did when, you know, there were a few good numbers, but for the most part, I mean, it, it did not play as easy as uh, the, the few days before when he went out there. He has a runner-up um, at the, the Open Championship. He has a runner-up from a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm going to play him down here, and I'm going to play Wyndham Clark, man. Uh, again, a guy who can bomb it out there and hit a wedge and put his ass off. Um, if he gets hot with that putter and has a lot of wedges in his hands, short eyes, he's going to have a distinct advantage. Um and so I want to play a lot of Wyndham Clark. Who do you like? Let's go, Kenny. So uh, Rico's in a five-man playoff. He's a five-man? Five-man playoff, dude. That's ridiculous. I just looked it up there. Hideki Matsuyama, the last cut he missed was at the Open Championship in 2019 in a major. If you're looking for a solid cash game, sneaky sneak there, 8500 bucks. Hideki, he, he shows up at these majors, man. He's got the short game to kind of handle that. He's got... You know, the length of the tee, he's got the iron play. The putting will remains to be desired. We'll see what happens with him. But I'll be looking at Hideki for sure. I'm with you on Tony. I'm with you on Wyndham. Tom Kim as well. And then Cam Smith perennially comes in under-owned in major championships, especially not Augusta championships. I know he is the champion golfer at St. Andrews. That was a different venue. But if he's going to be a 5 6% option at 8900 bucks, if he has one of those weeks where he chips and putts his way to 15 strokes gain total or something, that's how he wins these things. And in this kind of, if there's some weather, you have to rely on that stuff even more. I know we were looking at it for him to do that at the US Open. Didn't quite come through. Still $8,900. I will, I'll go there to that capacity. But um, not interested in Lowry, not interested in Fitz, but Fitz is a, an ownership guy maybe as well. If he gives me low ownership, I'll switch him out for one or two other guys. But I'm not really playing too many 9Ks. I'll be heavily invested in the 8s. Let's go into the 7K range. What are you doing with speed? Decent performance last time out. Finally got a top 25. Five top 10s in the last eight appearances at the Open Championship. Um, do you play him? 
Oh, is he going to be popular? I don't think it's going to be popular. I think at seventy nine hundred dollars, he's going to be very popular with his open track record, Kenny. You think he, so? He hasn't finished outside of the top twenty in in like I think eight of his last not ridiculous number. I'm not going to yeah. misquote some stuff, but his open track record is scintillating. So I think at seventy nine hundred dollars, he's going to like an optimizer darling. You know, that's just going to be too hard for people to pass up. So too many people on that roller coaster. Likely, the less on there, the more I want to play him. So I'm out on him. Out on Neiman, Bobby Mack, you said. I'll be going back to Brian Armin, Cameron Young as well. Give me Cam Young. I think he's one of my favorite options over here for sure, along with Sepp Straka at $7,100 too. Um, and we've got our Sam Burns and Minwoo Lee in the same same price range here, Kenny. Double or nothing for the Butterfish there. Oh, yeah, for the Butterfish. That's right. Uh, I mean, Minwoo Lee looked horrible. So I, I'm feeling okay uh, about the Burnsy uh, one. He played over uh, at Trump at uh, the, one of the Trump courses with Scotty uh, the past couple of days, uh, getting warmed up over there across the pond. Let's go. I, I think my gut play this week in the 7K range, again, my gut play last week, Alexander Norton, another top 10, going from the week before with Novak, the gut play, who finished eighth. And I'm going to go, I always thought that this event would be his best major because of the ball flight that he has especially in windier conditions. And that's going to be Neiman at $7,800. He hasn't, at some point in time, he has to do well at a major. And I think the open championship is, I just love that piercing low trajectory ball flight that he can just pierce through the wind. If you've seen him play throughout his years, it's such a pretty, pretty ball flight. Um, and, and, I know he's been struggling. I know he sort of lost his luster. But again, this is my gut play. He hasn't finished better in like 59th at an Open Championship ever in his career. Okay? So basically, this is a true gut play. I don't expect him to be highly owned. I'm hoping for a top 20 um, from him from here. Um, maybe even on a top 10 if we can get lucky. If this gut play thing keeps working out, maybe we'll, we'll get it. But I do like uh, Neiman as my gut play uh, down here in the 7K range. Um. I like Cam Young. I like Cam Young. Um, he, he crushed it at the Open Championship. He uses his life to his advantage. He's going to be able to pound it out there. Again, bomb and gouge his way through this course. I think he can. He has a couple of top tens coming, leading it, right? Uh, so the yeah. form is getting better. Um, he's improved. 7500 bucks. I'm playing fucking Cam Young. Fuck that. No, no doubt. If I'm going to play a shorty, Give me Brian Horn. 76 are the golf to the, the open champion of, of the year. Defending his championship. Again, he's going to be hitting his driver a lot, but he's accurate as fuck. Uh, you know, and so he should be hitting a lot of fairways. We would, uh, we would hope. Uh, and, you know, on that front nine, I think he could take a big time advantage uh, because it's so short. Uh, and then, you know, that when it comes down to it, uh, when you look at his bogey uh, avoidance, still pretty good. Top 15 in this field in the last 24 rounds. That will help him on the back nine, right? Get that scoring in from Harvard on the front. Take advantage of the wind at his back, hitting a shit ton of fairways, shorter, shorter course. Shoot 10, 12 under on the front for the week, right? And then just hold on for fucking dear life on the back. And, and he can do that. Um, so so I like Harmon um, a lot at 7,600. When you get below the stat, I mean, Giuseppe, Straka at 71. Um, you know, a guy who likes to play in big-time events against the big boys. Uh, and, and, of course, you can see his runner-up from last year. Um, maybe Corey Connors. I have I, I, to say whose ball flight you like in these conditions. Yeah. I thought you could say Corey Connors. Yeah, because maybe he's Corey that Connors. That little tumbling draw, you know, doesn't have tons yeah. of distance, but he's hyper accurate as well. Good long iron player. So showed up nicely at the Scottish too. What about any love for JT or Homa? JT went and won the tournament on Thursday. And it's been <laughs> yeah. like 50 I saw people were putting 50 to 1 bets on him after that. Finished outside the top 20, you know, like, yeah. and he has got even worse track record at open championships. Like he hasn't yeah. finished inside the top 10 in a single one of them. So 
No dice there for me. Oh, will look horrible too. Horrible. I mean, when you go out there, make the cut, and then after Saturday, you lost. You might as well just miss the freaking cut, Homer. Like, what are we really doing here? Um, Will's at a Taurus at $7,200. I will be here. What about your boy, Thigala? And Thigala. I mean, he showed, like, we've been lacking some some open, like, pedigree from him. Showed up nicely. I I like what I saw there. He's a a boom or bust option at $7,200. I'm in. I will be playing him a lot, along with Mathieu Pavon as well at $7,000. Because... He's not a cash game guy. He's a GPP oh, dude. Yep. Yes. So, boom, chaka, laka, let's see what he can do there. I'm in. And then even Akshay, you know, who the heck knows what he's what he's capable of at $7,000. These guys are 7 k You know, that's you click them first and your salary, your average remaining salary goes up. So, that's what you're kind of looking for in these guys. Look, the 6 k range is even funnier. You've got some real names in this range that are exciting, Kenny. Yeah, go ahead, man. What is Sung Im doing at $6,900? <laughs> I'm scared of him this week. Um, Played nicely like this week like, at the Scottish. I feel like he's going to, he did, he did. I feel like he's going to be so popular. Now, the thing about it is we've seen guys like this at this price. It reminds me of Kisner at the Masters like four or five years ago. Oh, and Sung like, at Brimline. Well, yeah, when he was like $6,700 uh, and you know, his form was amazing in the game, and everyone played him, and he still did well, right? It, it sort of reminds me of that. But since he's been so bad in majors, I don't know whether it's in his head. Um, if he can get, if I can get him at like ten to twelve percent, it's not going to happen. Is I don't think so. I, I, I think, I think he's a, I think he's a fade for me. I had him in my original cash lineup. Um. But I, I I pivoted because I was worried. I'm going Adam Scott as my final cash game because the guy's made 12 of his last 13 cuts at the Open Championship, um, right? He you just off finished the runner up at the Scottish. Um, he makes every cut at $6,700. I just wanted to make the fucking cut, uh, and I feel more secure that Adam Scott will make the cut than Sung Jae. Now I think Sung Jae might have a higher. I don't even know. Because you saw Adam get second, and you know he has all this experience uh, at the Open Championship. I, Sung Jae is going to be tough for me. We'll have to see how it goes as the week goes on. But I like Adam Scott. So my, my cash game cornerstones are going to be Oberg at 10100 then Fleetwood or Hatton um, at ninety five or 93 I think I'm going to lead towards Fleetwood after what you were talking about. Um, go Fle- at 93 Then I got Feed out at 87 and then I, I, I then I have uh, Adam Scott at sixty seven. This leaves you fifteen thousand dollars, which basically you could do anything. I'm going all the way up to nine thousand, and going down all the way low to six thousand uh, for me. So my so the nine thousand play, of course, is kept getting the six thousand on the dot play is Matthew Southgate. Uh, again, another guy who just crushes links courses, a links specialist. Uh, he's made every single cut in his career at the Open Championship. Um, I think he finished top 25 here last year. I'm just going with him as a puck play uh, to try uh, that I think can make the cut as a better than 50% chance of making the cut. And it can afford me to get the upside of a Brooks Kepka. So my top four guys are fucking over Fleetwood, Kepka, Fina. I mean, right? So stunts. I, 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 you got upside galore. They're pretty fucking safe too. Adam Scott, pretty fucking safe. Uh, you know, and if I get go five of six because Southgate misses the cut, and I might even change it to somebody else uh, after I do some more research. But I have six thousand to play with, and right now that's the guy I'm seeing. Um, other guys that sort of tickle my fancy, see Wu. I feel like the Open Championship should be his best major with his. With the accuracy off the tee and how good he is around the greens, at some point in time, he's going to hit at a major, and I feel like the Open Championship is the one where it could happen. I like him better than Sungjae uh, this week. I think it makes a great pivot off Sungjae. Um, give me Si Wu down here. I like Victor Perez at 6,200 a lot. Again, another guy who has played well against the big boys, right? Um, you saw him this past week with a really, really good Sunday to get himself a nice little paycheck inside the top 20. At $6,200, give 
Give me, <laughs> give me some of um, give me some of Victor Perez. Give me a little Jason Day up top. Again, around the green, putting, runner up last year, top twenty five in his last time out. I think he was top twenty five the last time he played here at sixty nine hundred dollars. I'm going to go ahead and take that risk. Same with Louis Usti. Usa Usti down here again. The only major he's ever won was this one. You know he's been gearing up for this major. It's the only one he's going to play for the year. He's had a good season, right? Um, so I like him down here uh, in the highest six case. Hoy Guard, another guy who could bomb it Last out there. Miss Nikolai. Both probably after what we saw this past <laughs> week. I like Nikolai better because I'm more familiar yes. with him, and that's who I was speaking of. But it looks like both are in fucking play. Yeah, uh, the way these guys are playing uh, this past week. Um, you know, those are like my favorite guys. Who do who do you like? So Benny on at sixty seven hundred dollars. If you're talking about nukes off the tee, give it to me, baby. Let's go. Let's see what he can get up to. That bag nine. Nah, he fucked me in cash this week. He was the only cash game question that didn't make the cut. Um, and he screwed me, and I was only able to get back like. I was able to get back like a hundred instead of winning double. I won like 50% because I was right on the line. If Benny makes a cut when, and he was like five under just uh, after dude, round one, I mean, he really, really fucked dude, me. So it's gonna be hard for me to go back to him, but it's going to be hard for a lot of people to go back to him. Uh, flop lag might be in play. And let's go double flop lags with Tom McKibben, baby. I never played any of him last week. His ownership will likely be down now in a much bigger field, better field. Give it to me. Especially everyone that was like, oh, Tom McKibben, Scottish, let's go. Boom. A 20% owned, Kenny. Tom McKibben last week at the Genesis. Wow. 20%. So that's not going to come through again because probably 5 to 7% of those people won't be playing him again. So I'll join maybe the 8%. Maybe, I mean, he has to be less than 10% in my opinion. Tom Hoagie, one of the best iron players at $6,400. You can't, you can't pass him up. You, you know, like, He's just so a bad around the greens, bro. But bro, he's the second best iron player. You can be shit around the greens when you're that good. You know, like if you just keep pounding greens, he can he can knock things tight from anywhere. So I mean on him, Dean Burmester, sixty seven hundred dollars. Nukes off the tee, good, you know, South African guys, they got this links pedigree. We got a few courses back home that are like this. Um, like you said, Adam Scott, I like a lot. Ryan Fox, sixty eight hundred dollars, Davis Thompson. I think after a, a crappy week last week, maybe he... I like Ryan Fox. Yep, Ryan Fox. And then, like I said, Matthew Pavan. And then Russell Henley at the top of the 6K range is going to be another guy I'm in the mood for who's not going to be very popular because he doesn't have distance, Kenny. You think the distance and ownership will be correlated this week, I think, a bit more than normal. And then to wrap up my 6K range, we're going to go out there with Matt Wallace. I think... He's a sneaky little sixty-one hundred. Did you see? Watch. Did you see what he said? Did you see his interview? No. Basically, like how he's fucked up in the head, and like he feels like he's playing like shit, and like like he basically went into tears about his game. I think after Billy Horschel last cried on camera, he kind of had a decent round. So maybe, maybe that's what maybe. you need. You know, maybe that's what you need. Maybe you're right. <laughs> just just you, know, you know. <laughs> Betterhelp.com, right? Get this shit off your chest. You know, maybe it opens shit up and makes them feel better. It makes makes it more clear. It was pretty good shit. Go check out the DP World okay. yeah. feed and check out the interview. Um, it was pretty good stuff. Uh, now, in, in this 5K range, I mean, what about uh, a name for a blast from the blast? Uh, Shabonker Sharma at $5,900. Random top, what, 15, top 20 this past week at the Scottish Open? Top 10 last year at the Open Championship. I mean, we're grasping at straws, but we're at the 5K rate down here. Uh, Romain Langascu, that might be Romain. the guy that I play instead of Southgate. Uh, because we'll see. Uh, because he's coming off like back-to-back -back top 10s. Southgate did have a fourth at the BMW last week. Uh, so he has the form as well. We'll see. I'll probably pick between one of those two as my final guy in cash game course. But, the, you know, in cash game finishing third, pretty impressive uh, down here. Uh, now, more into the 5K range, um, Shabaka Sharma is one guy that I'm going to be looking at. Um, uh, Marcel Seed 
the uh, the ponytail, the the, the 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 ponytail man again coming out of nowhere this past week at the Scottish Open to get himself a good paycheck. Who's made his last two cuts at the Open Championship, including a fifteenth place three years ago. Um, after that. I know I got a couple more, but I got to look for them. Go ahead. Okay. I'll start at the bottom. $5,100. Ernie Els. Still very functionable on the PGA Champions Tour. You know, Kenny, if there's one golf course that allows these guys, the old dogs, to roll through, it's the Open Championships, right? Ernie historically has had a lot, a lot of length, but I don't know what his length is now. Obviously, it must much less than it was, but I like him. You know, he's a savvy dog. Mateo Manacero, $5,400. Zach Johnson, $5,500. Sammy Valamaki, $56. Tristan Lawrence, Guido Migliosi, $57.58. Mackenzie Hughes and Ben Griffin are basically the same person. They just scramble their faces off, and they are 58 and they're both $5,900. So there's guys in this, 50, this 5K range that are really unique characteristics that have a decent skill set. Sammy off the tee. McKenzie and Ben around the green on that back nine, that's where they can make a run. You know, you, don't, you might not see them dialing it in on the front when it's birdie birdies, but on the back, a few chip-ins or things like that from them will be handy. All right, that sounds good. I want to have been forgetting here lately, but that's okay. because I now I'm only in first place in the slider league by like two points. I've had a pretty shitty last couple of weeks. So All right, well, down to, to, it's, well, let's talk it through you. Well, well, I, mean, listening I, I, know, in. I already know who I'm playing, so I'm not going to say it. Okay. Because I'm sure those guys listen to some of those guys listen to the show. Okay. And so they can they can leverage my my who I think I'm going to play. Um. So yeah, I'm not going to say anything, but I already have both my guys lined up. Okay. Anything it's else before we head out? I'm ramped up, Kenny. I'm I like. It's been a taking me a while to get to the excitement levels, but I'm fucking ready for this week, man. I'm so excited to like not sleep and watch golf. Oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. You can find me on X at Kendo VT. You can find my article on gupscorner.com. It'll be out tomorrow for the course preview. And then I'll have an updated one on Wednesday. I'll also be on the E9 podcast Wednesday night to go over all of our final thoughts over on Gup's Corner. Use promo code Kenny. Save yourself 30% on a sub. To Gup's corner. Make sure you get on that. Uh, and uh, you know, hit me up on X. I'll have my uh, underdog plays on there. Uh, you know, any other type of tidbits, any changes, all that good stuff. Uh, I'll have any live bets. Uh, make make sure you check us out over uh, at Kendo VT on X. Also, go to underdogfantasy.com, use promo code Mayo, get yourself a deposit bonus up to $250. Also, go to our YouTube page. Pick your winner of the Open Championship. Use your DK handle. Uh, put your DK handle on there. If you're the first one to pick the correct winner, you'll be up against us in a three-man for uh, a chance to go to a tournament of champions to win prizes at the Sony Open. Yes. So any bets that I'm going to probably be looking at weather, I will have weather, and I will have tea times by the time I do my show on Tuesdays at 7 Eastern on Mayo Media, back nine bets. Um, I'll give you guys all my bets then, likely once the tea times are out. And then kind of just taking a look at the weather. But catch me at the Model Maniac on X. I'll do my article as well. It'll come out on Wednesday that I have all those bets in there too for Rotoballer.com. So looking forward to a fun week at the Open Championship, Kenny. All right. Final major of the year. It's always a good one. It should be fun. Let's win some motherfucking money. DJ Nation. Up with the words.